Hey, what's up? Greg from Better Water Concepts here. Today you're going to learn the answer to how does a water softener work? The magic in a water softener is the little beads, these little beads that you see. There's kind of a magnified uh, picture of them. Uh, these are called, uh, have a number of different names. Some people call it zeolite, some people call it green sand, some people call it just uh, ion exchange resin. This is the stuff that causes the water to get soft. And how it does that is it is charged, these little grains are charged with, um, or little beads are charged with so, uh, sodium uh, from my just regular sodium chloride, basically table salt, only in a little different form. And uh, they are charged with sodium, and as the water passes through the sodium charged beads, then the calcium and magnesium that cause the hardness actually knock the sodium off, and the calcium and magnesium stick to the beads of resin, and the sodium attaches to the water. So that you know, if, if it comes in as, say, calcium carbonate, then uh, the calcium sticks to the bead, the sodium leaves the bead and attaches to the carbonate, so it becomes sodium carbonate in, in your water. Calcium and magnesium are what causes water hardness, and water hardness causes things like this to occur in your plumbing. Uh, this is uh, a water line from my own house that I had uh, in service for maybe eight years in a, in a bathroom sink, so it wasn't used all that often, but it developed quite a lot of scale. This is calcium carbonate and uh, magnesium carbonate, and if you can imagine this kind of buildup occurring in your water heater, then your water heater wouldn't be as efficient. Uh, it could, and has, clearly, the the buildup can occur in your plumbing, it can occur in your valves, it can occur in your dishwasher, it can build up in your iron, it can build up in your shower heads. I took a shower one time and I had a shower head plugged with calcium carbonate and the water came out and it was like pins sticking me all over. It was terrible. Uh, I took a pocket knife and, and reamed out the holes and made the shower where it was usable again. But it was all caused by hard water. So if you want a reason to get a water softener, then protecting your plumbing system is a good good reason. Uh, also, all of your appliances. It typically extends the life of a water heater about 30%, is, is what all the, the statisticians have to say about it. Also, hard water causes you to use more soap. In fact, uh, when I first started learning about water treatment, my uh, teacher was telling me that water hardness is basically the soap consuming capacity of the water. The harder the water, the more soap you need to generate a lather. So if you get soft water, then you don't need near as much soap, so you save money uh, on laundry detergent, you save money on soap and shampoo, uh, dishwashing soap. Um, so those are the reasons to buy a water softener, but that doesn't tell you anything about how it works. So I've got a diagram here that I want to show you. This is a water heater, and I've got a picture of, of one, but uh, basically hard water comes into the water softener um, and goes into a magic valve behind this black box, and water goes into the top, and it flows down. Now this is the green sand, the, the zeolite, the, the resin beads that are charged with sodium. The water comes down through here, the calcium is stuck to the resin beads and the sodium is knocked off and once it gets down there then you've got soft water and the soft water goes up this tube through the center and then out into your plumbing system. And it's all pretty much just keeps going like that. Uh, water softener 
you're, when you purchase a water softener, you're purchasing the ability for the water softener to soften or to remove a certain amount of hardness. And uh, once that hardness is reached, once, once it's used up all of the, the sodium in the resin, then it is uh, time to regenerate, to uh, kind of get this ready again for, to make more soft water. So the first thing in the process of regenerating a water softener is to backwash. And at this point in time then, the, the, val the magic valve behind this, the brains of the operation changes and it directs water into that tube that the water was leaving from before and it pushes the water backwards through the zeolite, through the green sand, and it pushes it backward at a high rate of speed so that the, the sand is actually expanded. It may go, you know, 50% more than what it was. And it's also the, it churning that sand and, and the, the, the sand beads or the, the resin beads coming in contact with each other also help to knock that carbon loose. And that carbon goes out the magic valve or not the carbon, the calcium. The calcium goes out the magic valve and into the drain. And it will do this for as long as the timer is set for it, upwards of 10 minutes or more, whatever is deemed necessary for the particular brand of softener to get all this resin cleaned back off. And once that is done, then uh, you start the brine draw. This is a, a container that's got salt and water. And the, the, the brine is basically a high concentration salt water solution. So the, the water that fills up here comes down through the salt into this drain canal and then is drawn up through this pipe up and in through the magic valve and it filters down through the top of the resin bed. And it goes down to the bottom and then up. And because this is really highly concentrated salt water solution, it is going to the drain also. That goes on until uh, the speci specific amount of time for your particular softener is elapsed. And then it goes to the next step. And the next step is just the rinse cycle. And hard water comes in, goes through the magic valve, into the top. Go, the rinse cycle is rinsing off the resin uh, and, and rinsing, not rinsing off the resin, rinsing out the, the resin bed, getting all the sodium out of it so you, you don't taste it. So it goes down through here gently and then goes up through, out the magic valve and into the drain. Now some softeners have a slow rinse and a fast rinse and it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour for this rinse cycle to complete. And once it is complete, then uh, the brine tank needs to be refilled. Now depending on the type of brine tank you have, you could have a wet brine tank or a dry brine tank. The dry brine tank will fill just prior to the, the backwashing cycle or a wet brine tank will fill right after the backwash has or the regeneration has occurred. In either case you have to have the brine solution ready for the next regeneration. So once the brine tank is refilling of course then the water is going through here now it's rinsed and ready to go. This is just a side job where you know a little bit of water is taken to to refill the brine tank but it is you're back in service at this point but uh, eventually this little float here is gonna is like a float in the toilet stool will the brine tank will get full enough and it will shut the water off and then you've got um, back to normal service and one of the things that I uh, mentioned earlier I had a picture of a water softener this is basically it shows you two separate tanks but most of the water softeners you find for a house is actually um, one tank where you can you've got the brains and the, the fancy 
uh, control valve, magic control valve is back behind, but uh, you've got the plastic tub that is the brine tank, and then inside right here is the resin tank where the zeolite or the green sand or the resin beads are housed. And so if this is all kind of a self-contained unit rather than having two different containers. Uh, if you get a really big softener for a really big, uh, like a, an industrial type uh, application, then you would have two separate tanks, but you don't need two separate tanks in a home. So this is more likely what you're going to find in a water softener. And that is about all there is to how a water softener works. Uh, again, this is Greg with Better Water Concepts. Visit us at www.betterwaterconcepts.com. Thanks for listening.